everybody, it's me, Susan Blackwell, and today I'm side by side my favorite Broadway band geek from the new Broadway musical, The Band's Visit. Look, everybody, it's John Cariani. Hello. John, tell our friends at home where we are and what we're doing today. Uh, we're in Tony Shalhoub's dressing room. Word. Uh, star of our show. And uh, he lets us play backgammon in his dressing room. So this is where we normally congregate, especially during tech, because when Tony's on stage, the rest of us really aren't. And so we come here and we play backgammon while we're waiting for him to get guess, stuff done. Guess who doesn't know how to play backgammon? She doesn't. This guy. So um, I'm going to teach her. Go ahead. Give so, me a little. Ready? For, we're going to roll to see yep, who goes, goes first. first. And it's going to be She rude. got a five. I got a two. So she goes first. So I understand that I'm going to go. I'm trying to move these fellows. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four. I can't do that, right? No, but you can move two. I could go one, two. Yep. And then and you I can move could this guy go, five, which would be a good one. And I count this one. One, one two, two, three, four, four five. five. Yep. I stacked them up. Yep. All right, it's you. I'm gonna roll. Ready? Oh, I got double, double sixes. Double sixes. <laughs> That's You're a really good roll. Me. <laughs> I'm gonna move one move of six, and then Here. two moves of six, and then three moves of six, and four moves of six. All right. I'm kind of crushing you right now. I'm up. I'm not the best though. I just want everybody to know that Etai Benson is really, really good, and Tony's better. Yeah. <laughs> In my book. Thirty second life story. I'm going to put 30 seconds on the clock, and you get to tell me your life story. Don't leave out the awesome parts. 30 okay. seconds starting now. Uh, born in Brockton, Massachusetts. When I was eight years old, moved to Presque Isle, Maine, far northern Maine. When I was nine years old, I met the guy I'm still with. Uh, been with for 18 years. Uh, went to high school, was in a jazz band, and did a lot of music. Went to college, majored in history, thought I was going to be a teacher. Did a play when I was a senior in college, loved it, decided to be an actor. Didn't tell my parents so they wouldn't say no. Became an actor, told them when I was working and then moved to New York when I was about 27 and then did some movies and some TV shows and then got on Broadway in 2004 and the rest is history and wrote Almost Maine because it's about where I'm from and I love where I'm from. That's amazing. What is the title of that autobiography? Love Rules. Oh my God. <laughs> That's a good one. Hi. So can I go? Nope. nope. Because you're blocking yep. all that yep. bullshit. Yep. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm getting closer to getting off the board. Perfect. What the what? John Cariani. You're in this musical, The Band's Visit, which I haven't seen yet because you're in previews, but right. everybody is losing their <laughs> minds about it. What the what? What the what is it about? What the what? Why is everybody going crazy? Um, I think everybody's going crazy because it's about kindness. Uh, it's about an Egyptian band that... Kids, that, kids are going crazy for kindness. Well, I think that's true because it's about an Egyptian band that visits an Israeli development town. Uh-huh. Um, and people who know anything expect Egyptians and Israelis to have uh, perhaps a cold meeting mm -hmm. <laughs> and it turns into uh, a bunch of people helping people out. What the what is the story with this dressing room? Uh, Marlon Brando, yes, Marlon Brand this was Marlon Brando's dressing room when he was in Streetcar Named Desire. So that toilet where yep. I just, if yep. I'm honest, dropped a doozy is where Marlon Brando used to drop a doozy too? Possibly. Interesting. Yeah, pretty cool. Possibly. No, let's just say yes. Let, let us, yes. Let's perpetuate that. I don't that. know if I want to think about Marlon Brando doing that. I feel like he had tremendous doozies. <laughs> You're not just an actor. You are also a very successful playwright. Mm -hmm. What the what is up with that? <laughs> well, when I, when I moved to New York, I was always uh, doing readings of plays about city people and urban people and really educated people and sophisticated people. And I grew up in far northern Maine and it's, uh, yes. the economy is potatoes and broccoli. Yes. Um, there aren't really a lot of plays about people from those parts of the world and so I wrote Almost Maine, my first play, and it's about people who work in wood chip mills and farm and fix things for a living and God. plow snow. and Isn't it like the most produced play in the history of all the plays ever? I don't know if that is true. I don't think that's entirely true. But, but what it's is true? very popular right now. Well, it's the most produced play in North American high schools, according to NPR, that's, over the past decade. That's crazy. Yeah, it's really cool. Name all the places where it's been produced, um, besides the United it's States. It's playing right now in Russia, Romania, yes. Hungary, India, Philippines. Isn't it nuts that something that came out of your brain is just being done all over the world? Yeah, and it's cool that the love came slowly. You know what I mean? So That should be the name of your autobiography. <laughs> the love came <laughs> slowly. slowly. All right, let's roll. Okay, it's your turn. Is it me? Mm -hmm. okay. Your special person is a cop. That's hot. What the what? So, and we know from your 30 Second Life story that you met when you were nine. Yep. Tell me more. <laughs> um, well, he's, I mean, he's the reason Almost Maine exists because Almost Maine is a collection of love stories. 
and they're for him, basically. Oh um, but we met. We met when we were nine on, so on a playground. It's just It's just. It's really not. I mean, it's just. It's just right. life, you know. It's. We met when we were nine on a playground. Went to our prom together with our girlfriends because our girlfriends were best friends, and then left Northern Maine and went out into the world. He went into the army. I went to college. Learned more things about ourselves that we didn't know about ourselves when we were younger, like that we liked guys. <laughs> we met when we were 30, uh, when he was visiting New York. He was working as an engineer. And the rest is kind of history. Amazing. Yeah, it's a good story. Amazing. And he's now a, a police officer. He was the first class in after 9-11. Always wanted to be a cop. Um, and he served as a B-cop for a few years, became a detective, and now he works for the NYPD. What the what is the greatest perk of... of being with a cop? Uh, all, they're always very aware of every room, every situation, and every danger you could possibly imagine. Oh, so when you move like into a be... space, they're always taking it in and figuring out what could go wrong and how to escape. I know that sounds crazy, Does but that's what they do. Does it make you feel safe? Totally safe. Oh. Yeah, and I'm really into that, so it works out well. <laughs> <laughs> Who else have you gotten there? Who else you got in there? Any celebrity impressions? No, don't do any. No I'm not celebrity an impression impressions. Guy at all. Nope. No, nothing. I'm not very any talented. Any other weird, there. weird sounds you make around the house? Any other? Uh, weird, no, I'm not know? like that. I talk to my dog though. Oh, my dog. When I talk like my dog, I think I think my dog has a lisp. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah. What's your dog's voice sound like? Well, he's kind of like, are we going for a walk or what? What's up, dude? That's what I think he does. So you got some people. <laughs> yeah, there. I guess I do. <laughs> Show us your pussy. <laughs> In this game, you pull out your cell phone and you show me a picture oh. of your cat, your hamster, your okay. hedgehog, okay. your dog, just your favorite picture. Okay, my dog. So what's your dog's name? Milo. Milo is your dog's name. Yep. And I want a really, really good, good picture here. Oh! <gasps> <laughs> That's Milo. <laughs> what kind of dog is Milo? Uh, he's a pit bull, cocker spaniel, pointer mix. Where'd you get that dog? Uh, stray from the heart. An organization that rescues. I pebbles. love a good a good pun name for a mm -hmm. dog rescue. Pretty straight awesome, from right? the heart. Yep. Um, Today we went squirrel hunting. Almost actually caught one. Pretty scary. And um, <laughs> now that we have the the visual, just give us a little more uh, what Milo sounds like. Hey John, what's up? Are we going for a walk? Because I really like to go for a walk. What's up? Milo, what's, up, dude? what's your favorite thing to uh, chase in the park? Oh, uh, squirrels. What do you oh. like so much about squirrels? They're just delicious. Have you ever actually tasted one though, Milo? No, but too close for comfort. <laughs> I question your commitment to the craft. Tell me a story about a time when you monkeyed around on stage or a time when you... Okay, ready? Oh, just, can we just do it? Just say it. I was in Minsky's, directed by Casey Nicola. <laughs> Rachel Dratch and I played girlfriend and boyfriend. We were playing Scrabble in my dressing room and I missed my entrance. By how much? Oh, so much that I it was in the Amazon in L.A. It was so far to the theater, I, to the stage, I couldn't even get there. And I was supposed to say something about the police being there or something. A big plot point. Guess what? What? I question your commitment to the craft. Okay. That's how that ends. Special skills! Got any special skills at the bottom of yeah, that resume? Yeah, I can resume? do good, good Chewbacca. You can? Mm -hmm. That's a very special skill. Hit me. Uh, Chew, I think it's a problem with the electrical equipment. <laughs> You have a million voices inside of you. Oh, I guess maybe. Yeah, was you that do. pretty good? That was pretty good, right? That that, was, that wasn't my best, but don't look at them. Look inside your heart and know it was awesome. No, that was terrible. That was bad. What are you talking about? It sounded exactly the same. Okay. Guess what time it is? It's time for Susan's fantasy jukebox. I got your nose, and you can have it back. But first, you have to sing me a song. Okay. Any song you choose. Like a whole song. Any song. A piece of a song. Well, I heard it this morning. All I want to do when I wake up in the morning is see your eyes. Rosanna, Rosanna. Throwing it back to Toto, yes. I never knew that a girl like you could ever something, something. That's all I know, but I really like that song. Rosanna, you know that part? Keep it going. All I want to do in the middle of... Keep Even his holy time. This has been another amazing episode of Rosanna, Side by Side by Susan Rosanna. Blackwell featuring the amazing John Cariani. Go see, <laughs> just instrumental, go see him in the band's visit. It's wonderful, huh? People yeah. are losing their minds. Yeah, people like it. Now, back to this backgammon game. Yeah, okay. Here we go. Whose turn? Your turn. All right. Elizabeth Early, who was in Something Rotten as a Swing, she's now in uh, Hello, Dolly. 
saw this picture of Milo. He, he stretches out to make himself feel better. He actually like self-soothes. And she showed me a picture of Snoopy doing the same thing, so we thought it was a pretty good. What do you call that, a meme? Is that kind of a meme? Is Not that really. like a meme? Not really. A GIF? Without a... Does a GIF have to move? I don't know any of that stuff. Hashtag? 